Okay, welcome everybody. Um, we, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we have a very special lecture uh, with uh, a very successful entrepreneur, someone who also uh, who's originally from Switzerland, who also has a lot of experience in Korea as well, both with uh, the startup that she's going to be talking about, Hard Force, as well as with many other activities. And um, as I mentioned, most recently, they won uh, fifth place uh, out of the 60 finalists in the Case Startup Grand Challenge. And that was out of thousands of uh, startups that had uh, applied. So uh, that was just a couple of weeks ago. And as I mentioned, you can see her LinkedIn profile uh, here. And I encourage you to connect uh, with her uh, on LinkedIn as you wish. And of course, the website HeartForce Dot, uh, com. Uh, I sent you also in the chat room, so I encourage you to also check more details there. So she'll be talking about uh, hard force, as well as um, uh, the Swiss uh, innovation ecosystem more generally. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, Claudia, this is a, a outstanding class here at Soulbridge International School of Business with many diverse students, about a third from Korea, about a third from Europe, and about a third from uh, elsewhere in Asia. So they're, uh, they've heard other special lectures from uh, other successful entrepreneurs in a wide variety of fields. So they're really looking forward to your presentation and discussion. So I know we have limited time. So Claudia, please go ahead. Yes. Okay, uh, good morning and hello everybody. Actually, yes, I guess there are three things uh, before I deep dive where I wanna introduce myself and you heard from the professor Gurel, I'm from Switzerland. So basically this is what I take as a synonym with Switzerland or most people. And I guess this one, the chocolate, and I guess also the watch. So things which actually build a culture and Switzerland is a, a culture of small and medium entrepreneurs. So what, what does that mean as a background or maybe as a how people react or, or build something or being creative? And if, if we think of the, of the watches, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. These were actually entrepreneurs or very small uh, size businesses from Germany and Italy and, and merged into relationships and finally got probably most successful or most branded known the Swiss watch as a Swiss brand. But however, there are of course other countries who, who also have very good products. But now I'm jumping to uh, the topic which you're about, it's creativity and innovation. But what it comes down to me is actually being open, being curious and relationship. So that is what I want to connect with you. So building relationships and listening to people. That is also a little bit what my way was when I, not from the very beginning, I started um, a business on my own or actually now I'm in the second uh, uh, business uh, starting. Um, but before my long re uh, career relationship was in the corporate world. And I guess many of you who are now in a phase where you think, oh, what is my dream? What do I want to become or learn? Probably seeking for big companies and some are maybe just hesitant or even afraid of going to small companies. Of course, there is a big difference. And showing you a little bit how the small and medium enterprise ecosystem or the entrepreneur system in Switzerland is, I want just to share with you some of the very latest uh, reports. So, yeah. So as you can see, uh, Switzerland has, I'm sorry, okay. 
here we go. So Switzerland has an ecosystem which is not yet at the potential as it would be if you look at the United States or Israel. So in Switzerland, um, many, many people are in the last 10 years shifting a little bit to take more risk, especially if like if you think of young people who, who want to start in a big company and not really going to a small one. But from a background and uh, how Switzerland got successful, it was the, the small enterprise and still is. So looking at the situation today, um, we have startups who are going into financial rounds and only 7% only of them are led by women. So I encourage all women participating here, taking more risk and enjoying the world of the startups. We'll get later to that in a detail. So in Switzerland, 34% of the startups are, are supported by investors. And most of them actually investments coming from the United States or other country. So from Swiss, only 34% of the investment is home base. We have about 50,000 person working in startups and uh, investors investing in, in big startups uh, are only 17 big capital investment um, company. Whereas if you compare it with uh, Switzerland, there are over 77. Another topic I would like to share with you is this one, which we had at the very beginning. If we look at Switzerland and compare it in the European ecosystem, the Swiss are a group of very innovative people. But innovation is not the only one, being creative and innovative. Of course, startups also need to be funded and they need to have the money to really prosper and grow. Now, Thinking of the crisis we are still in and uh, COVID, there are topics where startup or CEOs of startup kind of suffer, but of course can also prosper. So what do you think, what could be problems of startups right now in the, in the crisis of COVID? Is it possible to open the discussion? Yeah, uh, please feel free to uh, comment and uh, discuss uh, Claudio's question, namely, what are some of the challenges, how to overcome a COVID situation? Well, um, probably once the COVID started, um, all the business has to be closed. So obviously it's not possible to open the new business because there would be no customers or consumers who is looking for the stores and at least the startup is not based on the in the e-commerce business obviously it's not really possible to um, keep the business with the profit i think that would be the problem of the opening the startup um, or entrepreneurship as i mean in 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 current days Mm -hmm. Other other thoughts, ideas? What could be issues or roadblocks starting a startup? Or maybe you we are in the middle of a startup, like our startup, Heartforce. What could be roadblocks or issues which we have to solve or which we are struggling with? COVID maybe. Um, I, uh, sorry. sorry. You can go first. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, maybe uh, one of the main challenges will be collaboration of employees and also hiring people. So 
before the COVID, so you can just search out uh, some talents uh, from other corners of the world. But now um, borders are closed in many countries and collaboration uh, is less likely possible. I think that's one of the challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, many, many things are said. Uh, one of the, the biggest uh, problem for running startups uh, at the moment is not maybe the remote work. I think with COVID, uh, there, is, there was now an accelerator for startups who are already set up on, in the digital world, or maybe even doing better business if they are uh, uh, providing digital services or products. However, one thing which were, is common in most of the startups is actually the funding, the, the money. In, in the COVID situation, uh, there are some downsides when, when you are in, for example, investor rounds and you cannot really visit or see the people in person, which usually is, is one of the, the must-haves when you go into um, uh, seed money series A where you talk to investors and have these very detailed contacts or close relationships needed. Another one which depends maybe, we, we heard about e-commerce or mortar and brick stores, yes, lockdowns could be an obstacle to, to uh, sales or to, to the, um, uh, less sales, decrease of sales. Um, or um, in, in the situation uh, hard for us is we, we have been in this year, actually just the beginning of the year, we were rightfully in our last uh, clinical research and going for a, um, a clearance from the Food and Drug Ministry in the United States, which was completely stopped. Stopped because all priority went to COVID-related medicine or med tech. So there are many challenges. And then as you can see here on the screen, um, uh, startups need to adjust and re-strategize their money, their budgets. They might get some help from, from the government, similar like in Korea, we had it in Switzerland or in other European countries. So they need to adjust the budget for the, the current year and eventually also for next year, of course. Um, eventually pivot their, their business model as, as we just heard from one student, well, meet uh, uh, stores where we are not in the e-commerce industry, they, they just have uh, no more customers. If we think of uh, restaurants or, or uh, other um, shops. And of course, startups will ask for support for financial support. Also, we were um, hard for us coming here to Korea. We, we were not only lucky um, that we were chosen here uh, with an innovative product, but also getting the support to really uh, study and find out about the Korean market to go through or start through new avenues. And <clears throat> actually only out of this survey, only seven were uh, talking about we had to uh, downsize or dismiss people. So this said, um, the ecosystem in Switzerland is uh, quite uh, going ahead or let's say it's, it's prospering but far not in a way as you would know it historically uh, in the United States or also Israel, which is moving fast ahead. But one thing which I can say uh, where Switzerland is very strong, that is with, with the talents. We have a lot of talent similar like uh, Korea with the digital and AI uh, topics. And, and this actually attracts uh, companies like Google or Apple with their uh, research labs, which are located in, in Zurich in the main city uh, of, of Switzerland. So 
now I'm gonna switch uh, to the topic uh, of uh, introducing very briefly a uh, hard force uh, and also what what we are doing and connecting this a little bit with the market and e-commerce in in South Korea. Um, why why did we come to Korea? There are one major driver. Uh, apart from a very high healthcare system was of course also the, the connectivity, the mobility and uh, the e-commerce situation in, in uh, South Korea. As coming or if you come first time to South Korea and you see everybody has a mobile and is uh, shopping online, um, this is a, a huge, huge advantage or difference what, what we see in Switzerland or even Europe where we think people are a bit uh, behind compared to Asia or, or Ch China, of course, as well. So this said, uh, let me briefly give an introduction. This is uh, about five to seven minutes. And then I would say, hopefully we have another 10 minutes for open discussion. So with Heart Force, uh, we are uh, a digital health care um, company um, in the early detection of heart disease. In our innovation, we have uh, been awarded uh, this year with the German Innovation Gold Award. And what is it about? Now you think, I'm, I'm guessing your age, something maybe between 18 and 25, but the heart um, is actually the only organ which can feel and is an organ uh, uh, as a main organ to um, live as a motor of the person. And if you're young, you may be not thinking so much of it uh, in a way of getting sick, but over the lifetime, one in five, every fifth person will develop heart disease. And it will start as early as you guys today, um, wondering about the lifestyle of many, many young people, which um, is worrying. So yes, it can happen to you too. It happened to our founder, um, Beat, at the age of 52. He had a heart attack. And this was the time when he said, I need to take my fate in my own hand and develop a device for early detection. As there was nothing out there, or still is nothing out there in the market to really detect it from an early stage. Um, coming to Korea, we were, of course, then looking at the market and doing the market analysis and being aware that uh, telemedicine in Korea is, is still illegal or is, is not possible, but there are many ways now changing. And one of the cause, number one cause is globally um, heart of, of death, heart disease will soon be the number one in Korea as well. So we think we were at the right time, at the right spot to also raise awareness in, in Korea and eventually with plans moving ahead in Asia. I'm going with this very quickly. The problem we solve is something which is not, uh, people are not aware because the first symptom that somebody has with, with the heart usually would be a heart attack and a deadly heart attack. So why is it so difficult to detect? There, 77% of symptoms are not showing. And also, if you look at the tools which are out there, they're insufficient. Not going into this technical part, but um, uh, explaining more in, in a way that what we wanna uh, help and solve a problem to make it easy for everyone to analyze the heart health. Now, 
is the market there? This is a big question because most startups fail. They have a great idea and innovation, but the market is not there or neither the customer doesn't want the product. Well, in our case, we have globally about 15 million plus heart attack survivors and over 500 million people, adults diagnosed with heart disease. So this answer can be, yes, the market is there, but do people wanna buy it? Are we here on the right time or too early with a device which usually is not yet known or in a way used as you think maybe from the um, fitness industry or from, from the Apple watches is, are people ready to really take care or raise their awareness and prevent? So we are going in a preventive um, self-monitoring uh, era where people really can take responsibility of their own health. So it is a device and it's combined with an app where you can easily manage, uh, measure your heart. You just put the device onto your sternum and we will measure 120,000 data points. And the app will give you simple and actionable insights on your heart health. What is the background? Uh, our team uh, consisting of uh, medical doctors, um, biomedical engineers and so forth have, have analyzed the signals which are electrical and mechanical signals combined with seismography. With this technology, we can analyze patterns and find out the health of your heart. And why are we so special? Because if you look at the next slide, most most products on the market can only detect this left part. This is if you look at the Apple Watch or some uh, more fitness devices, they can actually detect a small part of uh, illness in, in, in the heart. But the most um, pressing issue is actually this one, coronary artery disease. This is where over 12 million people die every year. And with our tool, we can also analyze this part, plus much more. So we are coming with a solution, which is in the air of early detection, cost-effective and precise. So with medical grade precision. And of course, this is now the, the key where we need to find out our marketing and sales strategy. How do we make this available to the people in need. I'm skipping this one. Very, very briefly sharing with you our business model. So we are selling a hardware and in addition having an app where we wanna gather revenues on the recurring subscription fees. So that there is not a one-timer, but we also have uh, recurring revenues. In a second strategy on a B2B side, we're trying of course also to uh, collect data because today we're speaking about data. Data is the asset of the future. It was before information, but this, this one is the data. So this said, actually, I wanna close the session because I think time is running out and rather use uh, the remaining time, 10 minutes for Q&A sessions or whatever. Um, yeah, okay. Time is running after. Yeah, uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Claudia. Um, as you emphasize that the Swiss example, there's uh, many complex aspects of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important one is this talent, of course. And of course, Switzerland is very good at that, uh, good with that. So any questions from uh, the students? Uh, as I mentioned, many of the students are interested in entrepreneurship. Some of them are actually quite mm -hmm. successful. 
but uh, this is a great opportunity to ask uh, Claudia for some experience or perspectives or advice. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Sorry, uh, I couldn't catch some uh, points that I was late. And then uh, my question is, uh, how are you going to distribute this innovative uh, device for around the world? Okay, well, around the world is a bit uh, too much said in the beginning. As, as we are small and uh, mentioned earlier also the topic about the, the budget and the funding for medical devices, we need to have an approval in each country, in each country from the Food and Drug Administration. And of course, afterwards registering. So this said, we are, we are thinking about the strategy. So where can we actually succeed or scale up uh, the, the most and the fast? And I can answer this pre-COVID, our strategy was uh, going to market first United States, because there we have the most experience and have done the, the, the most uh, the an analysis. So not uh, full blown uh, uh, globally, but now with COVID actually we were, we had this big roadblock that we could not really continue with the, with our strategy. So we had to re-strategize and thinking of, well, could we start with uh, the European market or are there any other options? Just thinking out of the box and being agile. I think this is maybe something where small teams have an advantage compared to big conglomerates or big companies. So, um, not stand still, but uh, looking for other uh, areas. So that is why we actually had this opportunity coming to Korea and uh, looking into avenues uh, to maybe launch in Korea first or in combination, depending a little bit how uh, the, the landscape changes. We just heard some news that we might can in February go ahead with our uh, clinical uh, studies and um, registration with the FDA in the States. But this said, I think it's always good to be alert and have uh, being agile and having a backup plan. Thank you very much. So I have a question. So um, your company actually was founded in my hometown in Zug. I'm coming from there as well. And um, I wanted to ask you, how is it for you to work in a completely different culture like South Korea? How was this corporate change for your company, like from a Swiss company and then move to another market? Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. I think uh, I, I have two answers. Uh, one is uh, on a very personal level. So I, I used to work in corporate uh, companies and I was lucky enough to really I work in many, many different cultures and, and also learning from different cultures. And that actually opened my eyes or awareness also to um, how can you work together that one-on-one -on -one is 11 and not two in this way. Um, that is for me as a person only positive. Actually, I never had a really or if I weigh it and I did not really weigh negative. So culture and relationship, that is why um, some years ago, I had the chance to come to Korea and also learn about the Korean culture. So this said um, for Heartforce as a company, it is a, a very new and very different uh, culture. We were not used at all. So my role as I had this experience from, I lived, I used to live three years here before in 2015. So I learned about the culture, speak the language. And I only know that this is how you get closer and, and uh, get aware. So it's very important to connect wherever you go, being it the go-to market strategy or um, go, um, setting up strategic partnerships that you really also try to understand and work with the local peoples together. So what, what are the needs there or what are the, the pitfalls, the risk or just the environment? 
So with my team, of course, I had to, or I'm still, I still am exchanging a lot about the difference and what could be, what could work here in Korea, what, what is totally different um, from Europe or from a Swiss mentality. So yes, there are many, many things which, which we could um, fail, but also many um, um, great advantages. I'm just thinking about the, the technology and how people are, even elderly people are uh, so uh, tech savvy or YouTube. I mean, for Swiss people, that would be like, wow, well, no, no go at the moment, but they're changing, I think. Yeah. Right, Claudia, Thank one you. question. So the culture is quite different about accepting this sort of new technologies, but how do you find people in Korea acceptive compared to Switzerland or not quite accept uh, what you're offering here? In, in, uh, in terms of our product and service? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, it's difficult to give you an answer how they are accepting because we are in a prototype stage with, with our product. We are only now planning, that's our roadmap as part of it, uh, to test or to do pilot projects where we want to test the acceptance and also find out how the B2C or the B2B uh, strategy could be adjusted or adapted to the Korean market. It for sure will not be possible to do a copy paste of our uh, US uh, go to market strategy. So this is something I would actually like also to work with um, universities or with uh, young talents here in Korea um, to do some projects uh, supporting the, the market and, and uh, business analysis. So I cannot really give you an answer about the acceptance. I do know, I mean, or I'm aware, I don't know, I'm aware that Korean people are not so accepting new things other than there is an opinion leader or there would be physicians which really would support our product and, and share it uh, on a public or on the important channels. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I think we have time for one more quick question. Or uh, Claudia, do you want to make a final comment? Um, well, I wait for another question or I do a final comment, whatever. Uh, I mean, any question? Okay. Well, let me let me make a, a final yeah. comment, actually. Uh, Claudia talked about innovation and um, the importance of networks and having relationships and so forth as one component of innovation. As we've learned in the class, bringing different ideas together. We also learned in the very first day that innovation is a group effort and because it makes uh, the insofar as innovation is not just a new idea, but the implementation of that idea and to actually make it happen, to bring it to reality. Uh, there are many different aspects of that from the legal to uh, the academic side, to the marketing side, to uh, design. And all of these things require many different people. So networking and having a network and building relationships is very important. So I sent uh, again in the chat room, Claudia's uh, LinkedIn, and I encourage you to connect uh, with her and obviously with others on LinkedIn, because that's a very important component of innovation. You might have a great idea, but you need somebody to help with uh, manufacturing or distribution or whatever, and that's not your area or background. So you need to find that person. And uh, if you don't have a network, it just becomes very hard to do that. So then your great idea never becomes an innovation. It just becomes a new or inventive idea, but not an innovation. So I think I'll end on that point. Uh, would you agree, Claudia? Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, um, maybe if I just can share uh, this, this one, uh, as I myself, uh, when I was young, uh, 
I was always hoping for, or I had the luck for great bosses or, or people who really coached me or were of support along my way. And I also really want to offer if some of you guys want to connect with me or have a question where I can give some advice, do not hesitate. I'll, I'll be very open for that. And here are also my contact details, Kakao or, or WeChat. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you very much. I think we are a little bit over the time and um, pushing on lunchtime. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, please. Uh, uh, virtually clap for uh, Claudia and uh, share the appreciation. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you all to meet right. you. Okay. Okay. We're closing now. Okay.